other thing, we need a 7 16th, please. One other thing that we're going to show you here is, uh, if you don't know, is every roller camshaft, especially in the old school conventional big box Chevrolets, every roller camshaft has to have a cam button in it. Now what the cam button does is the uh, this little button right here, what this does is it's going to ride up against the, this is going to ride up against the front cover right here because this camshaft will try to walk backwards and forwards. So here's the cam button. This camshaft is going to try to walk front to back. A flat tappet camshaft, so a non-roller camshaft, is designed for two things. It is designed with the lobe actually not flat, it's actually on an angle. So when the lifter comes down and sits on it, so when the lifter comes down and sits on it, it actually is sitting like this. And what, the what it does is it spins the lifter, and at the same time it spins the lifter, it pushes the camshaft backwards. That is how come you don't need a cam button for anything as a flat tap at camshaft. That's anything other than a roller. But the roller, it is flat on flat, and the camshaft will go just like this. They don't care. But in a flat tap it, it forces it backwards, okay? And spins the lifter. So we're gonna check our thrust, our camshaft thrust, and we might have to adjust this. Um, that's the button, or that's the spot that the camshaft hits right there. Uh, the button hits. And we want to have about uh, in between 10 and 20 thousandths of uh, movement right there. That's always want to have clearance, uh, but we'll check that. That'll be good. And then this thing will be all sealed up here. All right, so you've seen uh, uh, Kyle put the front cover on. We got 20 thousandths of thrust on the camshaft. Uh, we put a uh, balancer on, and then we put the timing pointer on. Now you also see that we put the timing pointer on and actually verify a real deal, perfect top dead center. They make that nice. I mean, if you're off two or three degrees, um, probably not the end of the world, but it's not what you think it is, okay? So that's all square there. And then, then, then you just saw me measuring uh, this Melling billet oil pump that we got from Engine Pro 2. I mean, they're a super nice pump. Uh, I like to use these on just, just about everything. You can use an old uh, high volume normal pump, but um, you know, we like to use uh, these billet pumps and really make a, a really nice high quality piece. I mean, you know, a couple hundred bucks more, and, uh, but it's worth it. You know, I think a lot of that stuff's worth it. Um, so we measure up that oil pan height from oil pan rail. Now the gasket's not in there, so I'm accounting for what the gasket is. And then I come over and then measure what the oil pan is. What you'd like to have, and one nice thing about these pumps, if you look at them here, is that they have these nice little ridges here that if it ever did hit the pan, it would give enough clearance that it would, it would be okay, about an eighth inch of clearance. Uh, even if the pan hit this, the bottom of the pump and came up against it, it would still have clearance. It wouldn't completely close it off. Uh, but uh, what I'm measuring this up right now is we would have about a half an inch of clearance from the bottom of the pump to the bottom of the pan. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. If you get into the higher that you get up into there and have more and more clearance, let's say the pump is an inch off the bottom of the pan, well, there, you could have a tendency to run out of oil. If the pump is too close to the pan, you could have a tendency to, to uh, not have good oil flow. So I like to see anywhere from that quarter inch to half inch, we're at a half inch right now, which is gonna be really nice. Um, so we're gonna start putting on this oil pan. We'll use uh, uh, one piece oil pan gasket here and we'll have to, I think we gotta modify that one, not real sure. Um, but we'll check that out. Uh, and then we're going to go over, after we get the oil pan on, on here, we've already done that. The oil pan clearance, everything's all torqued up. 
Uh, Kyle marked everything that was got that got torqued and uh, rolls over great. No clearance issues, no problems like that. So after the oil pan's on here, we're gonna go over to cylinder heads and check those out. Um, <coughs> cylinder heads are also dark, and those are a set of CNC ported 355 heads. We'll go look at those after we put this oil pan on. All right, so you see we got the oil pan on this thing. Uh, this is a Steph's oil pan that we get right from uh, Engine Pro also. Um, the only reason I'm even mentioning uh, vendors and whatnot or where we're getting these parts at is uh, I'm not an infomercial. I don't do that kind of crap. Uh, I'm just telling you what we use, where we get it, and where it's gonna be available at. Uh, so you guys know, because what we wanted to do here is, again, is to uh, show you how to build this engine economical but really good high quality not some junkyard crap uh, but really good high quality uh, how you can do this and make the same thing right at home uh, anyways so we are gonna go over now and go look at the cylinder heads short block is all done time pointer on balancer on oil pump set uh, all those heights and clearances everything is all set right here uh, this is still using an 842 lifter. We'll go over that in, uh, when we put those in. Um, camshafts in and degreed, went over that. So let's go over and we'll, uh, we are going to go check out the, uh, uh, the cylinder heads. I'll show you how those all go together. Talk about everything from the valve springs, uh, valve spring pressure, valve sizes, and uh, all that. All right, so we're over here at the cylinder head assembly bench, and I got these nice dart 355 heads so you're looking at full cnc ported this this is a super common and that's where we're we're not trying to do the most elaborate this is not the most elaborate highest horsepower we can possibly make the maximum that is not what this is about this is about we're building this engine so you can drop this in anything you got go drive it anywhere you want to go on pump gas so we're putting really good parts, just like these cylinder heads. So full intake uh, port, full combustion chamber port, full exhaust port, uh, nice deal. Real common head for this application. We use the, and we use these he cylinder heads on our boosted stuff too. Um, honestly, the, these cylinder heads will make like 2,000 horsepower. Actually, they'll make a little bit more than 2,000 horsepower, depending on what the application is. So, uh, but we can still use these things in, uh, um, in an NA deal because they work really well. Uh, intake or valves here, these are stainless steel um, intake and exhaust uh, from again from Engine Pro. Uh, I forget what the sizes are in these. I think this is two, four hundred. Something like that. Yeah, let's go measure this up real quick. Make sure you get a caliper. Had to do this, had to do this because I just forgot. Yeah, this is uh, this is two four hundred, and probably one eight eighty or one nine hundred. One eight eighty. So one eight eighty exhaust valve, two four hundred intake valve. Now these are all come in with a eleven thirty seconds valve stem. Uh, eleven thirty seconds valve stem because that makes for a lighter valve. So uh, as far as RPM and controlling the valve with springs. Uh, 1130 seconds is the way to go there still being a durable piece you can make it even smaller stem stuff in na like a maximum effort na but uh, it's not as durable so that's a really good durable solid piece right there um springs now the springs are a pack so and pack is a really nice setup uh, with a titanium pack 505 retainer very nice very good deal these springs are uh, 1220, what are they? 1226. 1226 springs. And where we have these set up right now is a 260 or 270 on the seat. So what that does is when for uh, different applications, uh, I tell you what, 
the, uh, the whole spring story is a really long deal and we don't want to make this video another half hour or 40 minutes long explaining valve springs. You want to go see more about what a valve spring is, how it works, how it uh, affects on everything, spring pressures, uh, retainer keepers, everything, go to my playlist and uh, right here on YouTube, go to the playlist and you'll be able to see and pick out uh, retainers, spring tech uh, in my Steve Tech channel. So. Anyways, super good stuff. Pack retainer, pack uh, keepers, uh, locators, uh, you know, everything to keep this thing all nice and square. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these things together. Kyle already has uh, all the heights all measured up. So we're just literally gonna be able to put these things together. All right, now you see Kyle's got the heads all together. Um, we're uh, all set with the spring, stainless steel valves, already talked about all that stuff. These are actually the installed heights right here of what the actual uh, installed height of the spring is. So when you put these together, uh, what you're always interested in, what you need to do is you need to determine what the proper installed height is. So the distance in between there and the bottom where it sits, that's the installed height that determines what kind of spring pressure the spring has uh, based on how big a spring it is. So uh, those are things that you need to have proper tools to, in order to do. The other thing you need to have proper tools in order to do too is when we're doing the uh, camshaft degree, uh, obviously you need to have proper tools in order to be able to degree the camshaft. You need to have indicators, you need to have some stuff in order to do it properly, do it right. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, oh, uh, we are going to go over and I'm going to put these heads on using those Kometic caskets and ARP bolts. Now, normally we would use studs. The studs is actually a little bit of overkill. Um, but we're going to use bolts in this application because guess why? Uh, a, they work. B, it is nearly impossible to get head studs for a big block Chevrolet right now. So, since in this application, the head bolts, ARP head bolt, works extremely well zero problem it actually in this application works just as well as the uh head studs that's exactly what we're going to use so i'm going to bolt these heads on and then we're going to go through and start checking our valve train and i'm going to show you how to do valve train geometry to determine the proper length push rod A simple little thing that I find that a lot of people don't know, which is expected, is that washers, AN washers, have a chamfer. You see that chamfer? Now, on a uh, head stud, head stud and nut, it doesn't matter which way you put them technically. I always put them so they're up like this because it's a force of habit because they need to go up with a bolt. So on the bolt head, that chamfer needs to be up because there is a real small radius right in there. And if you put the square edge of the washer in it and up, it will hit that radius and make a little weak spot in the bolt. As a matter of fact, you can see that. See that little bit? Of air gap there that's all the way up but it'll tighten up it'll torque it'll do everything it'll crush it down but it will have a tendency or it will be trying to crack the head off there so that's just a little fyi a uh, little uh, just a little simple tech tip uh, if you're not paying attention you might not even know it or you get washers and people just throw the things on there uh, that's what they're made for is to have that chamfer always go up
All right, so we're getting ready to put on the rocker arms, and then we'll show you the, all the how to set the rocker arm geometry. Uh, the rocker arms that are going on this are a steel intake and exhaust full roller rocker arm. Uh, this is that Engine Pro brand also. Um, nice, uh, durable rocker arm. So in a 172 ratio. So normal big block Chevrolet stuff. This is like a, a good endurance uh, rocker arm. Um, we'll talk about the rocker arms a, a little bit later as we're doing the geometry. Uh, and then lifter-wise, the lifters are a Morel lifter. Um, these are also sold uh, by uh, the Engine Pro companies. Uh, but this is a, uh, a nice roller bearing 842 center-on-center -center, uh, lifter. So real good set of lifters on this thing too. In fact, those are, those are a little expensive. Um, but nice uh, rocker arm system. We're going to be putting the girdle on it. So it uses a uh, dart, its own girdle system. So we'll talk a little bit more about this and, you know, rocker arm systems and, you know, different grades and whatnot uh, as we're doing the um, uh, rocker arm geometry. Also, we're putting lash caps on this and uh, uh, to give us a little more area to, to uh, work with. In fact, I'll show you something real quick because we're actually going to put this back. We've been mocking it up off camera. And you can see here, because it left a pretty nice mark, I think you can see that on camera. You can see that imprint that it left right there. Can you see that on camera? That is the sweep of the rocker arm with the correct length push rod. And there's the intake. It's a little farther over here towards, the, you know, towards this direction, this way. Uh, but not much more than like 25,000. So super happy with both setups on that. That's a, that's a nice looking sweep, small, short, doesn't have it real wide. And I'll explain all that here in a minute. We got the uh, two rocker arms mocked up on here. So you can see how you supposed to, how you are supposed to set uh, your rocker arm geometry to determine your push rod length. Now on a stud mount, uh, the push rod makes the, the fulcrum go up or down. So you can't make things quite as nice as what a, um, a shaft mount system would be um, because on the shaft mount system you can raise that fulcrum and you can move the shaft or move the rocker in and out some if you want to do a bunch of modification. So you're a little limited on what you can do with a stud mount like this but this is the traditional old school system that, would, that works fine. Works great especially in this kind of application it's fine. There's always better so uh, like everything in the world, there's a, I figure everything is like a good, better, best situation. Um, this is a good rocker arm setup. There's better and then there's best. Uh, so like the rocker arms that are on my SMX engine, uh, those are $5,000. Okay. They're the best. Uh, this doesn't need $5,000 rocker arms. Okay. It would be astronomically expensive for what it is. So there's always better, but this is really good. Uh, and this works really, really good. So, uh, and what we have here is I didn't end up having all the push rods I needed, but I did have enough to do mock-ups. So we're not gonna be able to put this together tonight. I think we're gonna put this the rest of the way together on the engine dyno tomorrow, but I have these mock-ups so we can at least go through and show you how to do the uh, proper geometry. So what you want to be looking at here is Basically, your rocker arm tip, the roller tip, needs to start basically in the same spot at uh, closed and at wide open, it needs to end up being the same spot. That would be perfect sweep. So as you can watch here, this rocker arm, that roller tip will go forward some, which is supposed to, and then it goes at wide open lift, it goes backwards, basically, that is really good, basically right where it starts from. And it's just off center. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty good right there. It's a little, it starts off a little bit farther back, but I think all things said and done, that's, that's a nice sweep. And sometimes we end up having to take uh, the best compromise of everything because on the stud mount systems like this, as the valve gets longer, like this, the pivot needs to raise up and they get closer together. As this stuff gets shorter, they get farther apart. 
So you would have to, it's impossible. You would, well, nothing's impossible, but uh, too, cost, uh, too costly to actually move this stud would actually need to go backwards a little bit, or you end up spending, uh, you know, another couple thousand dollars on rock arms to get a rock arm that is slightly shorter, like 50,000 shorter to make it perfect. Okay. But this is really good. So that is how you need to set up. So you don't have all this really long sweep motion. Uh, for example, if it's too short here, uh, it will start way over here. It'll go way out and kind of end up there. Uh, but like I said, you want to have that roller tip basically start in the one position. It'll always go forward and then it'll end in the same position or really close. That's what we're hunting for. So even if it's not directly on the center of the valve, which is really, really hard to do with this style system, uh, that's okay. It doesn't need to be directly over the center of the valve. It needs to be in the valve on that lash cap because we are putting lash caps on this to give it more uh, area to ride on. Uh, in a nice location on that lash cap, basically in the middle, and it sweeps properly. So that's the way you need to set up your push rods. And it'll affect it by how long that push rod is. So you change the length, and it'll make that sweep differently across the valve tip. So that is how you set up uh, valve train properly. Uh, this is going to be super nice. No problems with this. Uh, uh, clarification. Anything can break. Uh, the only thing that even even stock engines break. So, I mean, anything can break. Uh, this thing, you know, running up there at 7,000 RPM or more. Uh, it could have a problem, but it shouldn't. This should be perfectly good. So, we're going to uh, get the right push rods for this thing and finish this thing off on the dyno tomorrow. All right. So, now we're on the dyno. We're finishing up. Uh, I told you we had to get the right length push rods. I showed you all that geometry. And now I'll show you real quick the stud girdles and how these things work. Um, so the stud girdles, uh, if you don't know already, and some guys have been using these for a long time, um, obviously they just give all the support to the studs. So if you don't have the stud girdle on here, when the rocker arm uh, opens up, especially with roller cam stuff, you'll actually see this stud move. It'll deflect. Okay. So what we do here is we have uh, uh, the stud girdles keep that from happening. So it just makes things a lot more rigid, makes it a lot better. Uh, but you do have to be careful when you adjust these things because they do have a tendency, depending on where you place them, of moving stuff around a little bit. So when you adjust the lash on these, you, know, you have everything kind of loose, you get it roughed in, you get these things snugged up, snugged up tight, but still be able to turn the the nut and then adjust it and then set your set screw, check the adjustment and then tighten up the stud girdle and check your adjustment again. So they're a little bit harder, a little bit more of a hassle to adjust, but uh, this is the standard method for 30 years of doing stuff and uh, just a good solid dependable deal. Once it's all done. So that's just a little heads up on how you do the uh, valve train. Now we have our uh, Edelbrock, uh, intake manifold here, dominator carburetor. I'm going to show you that in a minute. We're going to have a MSD distributor with complete MSD ignition. Now, I'm not showing you the uh, valve covers just yet, but let's take a look at the, uh, the carburetor right here. So what I do is I call up my buddy, Patrick, at Pro Systems Carburetors. I say, hey, this is what we're doing. He goes, perfect. I'm going to do up this dominator for you. So this is a 1250 CFM uh, Pro Systems Dominator. Uh, me and Patrick basically started out together. Uh, he was, uh, before he was even as big as he is, he was using my dyno to test carburetors back 25 years ago, probably. Seems like a long time. So uh, excellent. Car uh, he is the... The number one carburetor guy there is, period, to tell you the truth. So you guys want carbureted stuff, uh, I'm going to sell you Patrick's stuff, uh, and I always recommend Patrick's stuff. It's always great stuff. Uh, so uh, we're going to start buttoning this stuff up and then finalize and show you the uh, valve covers. And the reason why I'm waiting on the valve covers because they are, even I think they're super cool. I mean, it is, they're really nice, and it fits the whole mode. 
of everything that this engine is. Uh, so uh, let's uh, button the rest of this up, and the next time you see this, this is going to be completely together.